Truth. Welcome to our Wednesday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. This week I've started sharing probably my favorite teaching talking about spirit, soul, and body. It's about who you are in Christ. It's your spirit that got changed, not your physical body. You still got the same body. You still got the same mind. And those things are subject to change. You can exercise. You can lose weight. Uh, you can educate yourself and do change to a degree, but you still have a body and a soul that have not been saved. They've been purchased. Someday we're going to get a glorified body. Someday we will know all things, even as also we are known, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. So those things are going to be changed in the future, but the only part of you that has changed right now is your spirit man. And you can see that because the verse that I started with out of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. It didn't say old things are passing away. It's not a process. It's something that's already happened. All things have become, not are becoming, but have become new. That's not true in your physical body. It's not true in your soul. But in your spirit, you are a completely brand new person. And yesterday, I was making the point from a number of different scriptures that your spirit can't be seen or felt. Now, this is important that you understand this because there's so many things in the Bible that it talks about that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And we look at that as something that is on paper only. It's not a reality. And people will say, if I had this power on the inside of me, if I had something powerful, I'd know it. I could feel it. Well, see, that's because in the flesh, in your physical body and in your soulish realm, if you're hot, you just know it. If you're cold, you know it. If you have a pain, you know it. You don't have to think about it and study it. You don't have to renew your mind. You just know it. If you're discouraged, you just know it. And so we assume that the same thing would be true in the spirit realm. If I had God living on the inside of me, if I was already healed, if I had the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead living on the inside of me, which Ephesians 1, 19 says we do, if I had it, I'd feel it. I'd know it. No, you won't, because Jesus said in John chapter 3, verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Flesh is flesh, spirit is spirit. The spirit is in a different realm. It's not physical. It's not tangible. It's not something that you can feel and perceive with just your five senses, what you can see, taste, hear, smell, and feel. The way you see what's going on in the spirit realm, Jesus said in John chapter 6, verse 63, it's the spirit that quickens, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And in James chapter 1, it says that when you look into this perfect law of liberty, you're like looking in a mirror. It's a spiritual mirror. If I want to see what I look like in the physical, I have to go look in a mirror. Did you know that you have never seen your face? And some of you think, well, that's crazy. I have too. No, you've seen a reflection of your face. You've seen a drawing of your face. You've seen a picture of your face. But you, with your physical eyes, have never looked at your face. How do you know? How do you know all of these things? You're just taking what you see. Have, haven't you ever stood in front of the, one of these mirrors that makes you look tall and skinny or short and fat? Did you know that a mirror can distort things? How do you know that what you're seeing is actually accurate? Now, I'm not trying to get you to doubt, but I'm saying, here's the point. You are taking by faith a representation, a reflection, a drawing, a picture of what you look like. And you, you believe it and you act accordingly. Did you know what? You can't see with your physical eyes your spirit, but you can take what the Word of God says as being accurate and you can read and hear who you are in Christ and what you have. And as long as you understand that there are spiritual truths and realities about you, who you are in the spirit, that you can't perceive with any physical means. If you can understand that, then you can read what the Bible says about you and just believe it. 
But you know, if I told you, well, you don't have any pain in your body, and yet if you felt pain, well, then it'd be hard for you to understand this because I'm saying something contrary to your experience, and you'd say, you know what, I don't care what you say, here's what I feel. And the sad fact is most of us have been totally dominated and controlled by the flesh, what we see, taste, hear, smell, and feel. And we've gotten to where if I can't perceive it by one of these five senses, then it's not real, it's not reality, it doesn't exist. But that's not true. There are spiritual things that you can't see or feel. Let me give you an example of this over in 2 Kings and in chapter... Six is an instance where Elisha, the prophet, had been telling the king of Israel all of the king of Syria's battle plans. And so every time the king of Syria would send an ambush into Israel to fight with the king of Israel, uh, Elisha, God would tell him, and he would go tell the king of Israel, and so the king of Israel would ambush the ambush. And this happened so often that finally the king of Syria says, somebody here has got to be a traitor. SOMEBODY HERE IS GIVING AWAY MY MILITARY SECRETS. AND ONE OF HIS SERVANTS SAYS, IT'S NONE OF US, BUT THERE'S A MAN OF GOD, ELISHA, WHO TELLS THE KING OF ISRAEL THE WORDS THAT YOU SPEAK IN YOUR BEDCHAMBER. AND IN VERSE 13 IT SAYS, AND HE SAID, GO AND SPY WHERE HE IS THAT I MAY SEND AND FETCH HIM. AND IT WAS TOLD HIM, SAYING, BEHOLD, HE IS IN DOTHAN. THEREFORE SENT HE THITHER HORSES AND CHARIOTS AND A GREAT HOST, AND THEY CAME BY NIGHT, AND COMPASSED THE CITY ABOUT. AND WHEN THE SERVANT OF THE MAN OF GOD WAS RISEN EARLY AND GONE FORTH, BEHOLD, A HOST COMPASSED THE CITY, BOTH WITH HORSES AND CHARIOTS, AND HIS SERVANT SAID UNTO HIM, ALAS, MY MASTER, HOW SHALL WE DO? THIS IS JUST THE OLD ENGLISH WAY OF SAYING HE PANICKED. HE WAS SEEING ALL OF THESE SOLDIERS, A GREAT HOST, MAYBE THOUSANDS OF SYRIANS SURROUNDING THE CITY, AND HE KNEW THAT WHY THEY WERE THERE. FINALLY, SOMEBODY HAD TOLD THEM THAT ELISHA WAS GIVING AWAY ALL OF THE KING OF SYRIA'S BATTLE PLANS. AND SO THEY KNEW THAT THEY WERE IN TROUBLE. AND HE TOLD, he told HIS MASTER, hey, WHAT ARE WE GOING TO DO? AND LOOK AT THIS IN VERSE 16. AND HE ANSWERED, THIS IS ELISHA, ANSWERED AND SAID, FEAR NOT, FOR THEY THAT BE WITH US ARE MORE THAN THEY THAT BE WITH THEM. NOW SEE, IF ALL YOU THINK IS REAL IS JUST THE PHYSICAL REALM, IF YOU ARE CARNAL, THAT'S WHAT THE BIBLE CALLS CARNAL, YOU KNOW, WE DON'T USE THE WORD CARNAL MUCH, BUT IF WE DO, IT'S USUALLY A DEROGATORY TERM, TALKING ABOUT SOMEBODY about BEING BAD OR EVIL OR SOMETHING LIKE THAT. BUT THE WORD CARNAL JUST MEANS OF THE FIVE SENSES OR DOMINATED BY THE FIVE SENSES IS WHAT IT'S TALKING ABOUT. SO WHEN YOU SAY A PERSON IS CARNALLY MINDED, IT JUST MEANS THAT THEY ARE CONTROLLED AND DOMINATED BY WHAT THEY SEE, TASTE, HEAR, SMELL, AND FEEL. THEY DON'T PERCEIVE THAT THERE'S ANYTHING BEYOND JUST THIS PHYSICAL, NATURAL REALM. AND SO, HERE ELISHA SAID, FEAR NOT, THEY THAT BE WITH US ARE MORE THAN THOSE THAT BE WITH THEM. IF YOU ARE CARNAL, JUST DOMINATED IN CONTROL, THINKING THAT ALL THAT EXISTS IS IN THIS PHYSICAL REALM, THAT THERE IS NO SPIRITUAL WORLD, THERE IS NO SPIRIT ON THE INSIDE OF YOU, IF IT'S ALL JUST PHYSICAL, NATURAL, WELL, THEN PEOPLE WOULD SAY, ELISHA LIED. AND YOU KNOW, THIS IS WHAT A LOT OF PEOPLE THINK ABOUT PEOPLE WHO WALK IN FAITH. NOW, CERTAINLY, THERE'S SOME PEOPLE THAT MISREPRESENT FAITH AND SAY AND DO SOME WEIRD THINGS, AND, and uh, THAT'S NOT WHAT I'M TALKING ABOUT. BUT IF A PERSON IS TRULY STANDING IN FAITH AND STANDING AND BELIEVING AND SPEAKING FORTH WHAT THEY BELIEVE IS TRUE IN THE SPIRIT REALM AND USING THEIR FAITH AS A BRIDGE TO BRING THAT SPIRITUAL TRUTH INTO PHYSICAL REALITY, WELL, THEN THAT'S WHAT ELISHA WAS DOING HERE. BUT SEE, IF YOU WERE JUST CARNAL, IF YOU WERE CONTROLLED AND DOMINATED BY YOUR FIVE SENSES, SOME PEOPLE WOULD SAY, THAT'S A LIE, BECAUSE YOU COULD, you could COUNT THE SYRIANS BY THOUSANDS, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. THERE WAS THOUSANDS, HORSES AND CHARIOTS AND A GREAT HOST. AND THEN YOU LOOK OVER TO ELISHA, ONE, TWO, TWO OF YOU VERSUS THOUSANDS OF THEM. IF ALL YOU ACKNOWLEDGE IS JUST THE PHYSICAL REALM, IF YOU ARE ONLY CARNALLY MINDED, THEN YOU WOULD MISS OUT ON WHAT ELISHA DID HERE. BUT SEE, ELISHA, HE WASN'T LYING. SOME PEOPLE THINK THAT FAITH IS SAYING THAT SOMETHING IS TRUE WHEN IT REALLY ISN'T TRUE. BUT IF YOU'LL SAY IT AND BELIEVE IT HARD ENOUGH, IT'LL BECOME TRUE. NO, THAT'S NOT ACCURATE. FAITH IS SAYING WHAT IS TRUE. IT MAY NOT BE PHYSICALLY TRUE, BUT IT IS SPIRITUALLY TRUE. IT'S IN LINE WITH WHAT THE WORD OF GOD SAYS. THE WORD IS SPIRIT. 
and it is life. And the Word reveals. It's like looking through a window into the outside. If you're inside of a building, you may not even know if the sun's shining, if it's cloudy, if it's day or if it's night. But you could look through a window, and that window will give you a glimpse into the outside, and you can tell what's happening. Well, this is our window into the spiritual world. What's happening in the spiritual world? See, if you understand this, faith isn't saying something that isn't true until it becomes true. No, faith is saying what is true. It's just a spiritual truth. It's a spiritual reality, and your faith gives substance. That's physical reality to something that existed in the spiritual realm. This is what Hebrews chapter 11 says. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Notice it didn't say that things that are seen, talking about physical, tangible things, were made of nothing. No, they were made of things. They were made of things that already existed in the heart and in the mind of God. It was a spiritual reality, and it became a physical reality. When a person says that by the stripes of Jesus I'm healed, and yet you can still see this big old goiter on their neck, some people will say, well, you just lied. Well, it depends. If you think all there is is physical reality, well, then yes, that's a lie. But if you acknowledge that there's a spiritual realm, it's not a lie to say what is true in the spiritual, and it's going to come into reality. See, this is what Elisha did. Elisha stood up and said, Fear not, those that be with us are more than they that be with them. And I'm sure that Gehazi probably thought, Man, you, you, you're missing it. There's thousands of them, and there's only two of us. But look at the next statement. It says, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. Now, this wasn't talking about his physical eyes. Gehazi's physical eyes were wide open. Man, biggest saucers looking at all of the Syrians out there. He wasn't talking about his physical eyes. He was talking about the eyes of his heart. Let him see into the spiritual world. And it says that the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountains were full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Now, notice it didn't say that the Syrians just disappeared. This doesn't change physical fact. In the physical realm, there were still a host of Syrians, horses and chariots surrounding them. That didn't change. It's not like all of a sudden the physical realm changed. But behind the physical realm, in the spirit realm, there were horses and chariots of fire, the angels of God surrounding them on the mountains. And so what Elisha said was true if you take into account the spiritual world. In the spiritual world, there were angels round about them, and the angels outnumbered the physical armies of Syria that came against them. And see, this is the way it is with us. I don't deny that Satan sometimes hits my body with physical things. I don't deny that I have a pain. I don't deny that things happen, but I do deny that that's all there is. And the Bible says that by the stripes of Jesus, I was healed, 1 Peter 2, 24. Not that I'm going to be healed. I was in the past tense. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19, the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead already lives on the inside of me. I'm not trying to get God to come and heal me. By His stripes, I was healed. That resurrection power lives on the inside of me. And so I just start speaking forth what is true. It may not be a physical truth yet, but it's true in the Spirit. And my words have death and life in them. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And by my words, I can literally give physical, tangible reality to what already exists in the spirit realm. In the spirit realm, I have the same power that raised Christ from the dead living on the inside of me, but it's got to come out of the spirit and into the physical realm. How do you do that? You do it the way that God created the physical realm. Genesis chapter 1, God said, let there be light. God said, let the earth bring forth fruit. 
GOD SAID, LET US MAKE MAN IN OUR IMAGE. GOD SPOKE EVERYTHING INTO EXISTENCE. HE CREATED EVERYTHING PHYSICAL FROM THE SPIRITUAL SUBSTANCE THAT ALREADY EXISTED, AND WORDS WERE THE CREATIVE FORCE. AND WORDS ARE THE CREATIVE FORCE FOR US TODAY. YOU SPEAK FORTH THESE THINGS. BUT UNLESS YOU UNDERSTAND WHAT I'M CALLING SPIRIT, SOUL, AND BODY. YOU COULD REFER TO IT AS YOUR IDENTITY IN CHRIST, your, WHO YOU ARE IN CHRIST, ALL KINDS OF THINGS. BUT UNLESS YOU UNDERSTAND THAT IN THE SPIRIT, YOU NOW ARE A NEW PERSON AND YOU HAVE THIS RAISING FROM THE DEAD POWER ON THE INSIDE, THAT YOU ARE COMPLETELY CHANGED. IF YOU DON'T UNDERSTAND THAT, IF YOU ARE LIMITED TO THINKING THAT ALL THAT EXISTS IS WHAT YOU CAN SEE, TASTE, HEAR, SMELL, AND FEEL, JUST THE PHYSICAL, EMOTIONAL REALM, THEN WHEN THE BIBLE SAYS, YOU LAY HANDS ON THE SICK AND THEY SHALL RECOVER, YOU'LL THINK, WELL, I DON'T FEEL ANYTHING, SO THAT MUST NOT BE TRUE. IT DOESN'T MATTER WHETHER YOU FEEL IT OR NOT. IN THE SPIRIT, YOU HAVE THE SAME POWER THAT RAISED CHRIST FROM THE DEAD, AND IF YOU WOULD JUST ACT IN FAITH AND OBEY AND DO WHAT GOD SAYS, THAT SUPERNATURAL RAISING FROM THE DEAD POWER WILL FLOW OUT OF YOU INTO OTHER PEOPLE. BUT YOU'VE GOT TO BELIEVE IT. YOU'VE GOT TO RENEW YOUR MIND. AND ONE OF THE BIGGEST HINDRANCES TO SEEING GOD FLOW THROUGH YOU, in, TO YOU AND THROUGH YOU, IS THE FACT THAT PEOPLE ARE JUST CARNAL. THEY ARE LIMITED TO ONLY WHAT YOU CAN SEE, TASTE, HEAR, SMELL, AND FEEL. AND SO THE BIBLE WILL SAY, BY HIS STRIPES YOU WERE HEALED. AND THEY'LL SAY, WELL, I KNOW THE BIBLE SAYS THAT, BUT I'M NOT. HERE'S THE DOCTOR'S REPORT. THE DOCTOR CAN ONLY CHECK YOUR PHYSICAL BODY. THEY CAN'T CHECK YOUR SPIRIT. AND THEY'RE JUST LOOKING IN THE PHYSICAL REALM. IN THE PHYSICAL REALM, YOU MAY NOT SEE THAT SUPERNATURAL POWER OF GOD MANIFEST YET, BUT IT IS THERE. YOU WERE HEALED BY THE STRIPES OF JESUS. THAT RAISING FROM THE DEAD POWER IS ON THE INSIDE OF YOU, AND YOU'VE GOT TO LEARN HOW TO COOPERATE BY SPEAKING YOUR FAITH. DEATH AND LIFE ARE IN THE POWER OF THE TONGUE. SPEAK TO YOUR MOUNTAIN. Uh, MARK CHAPTER 11, VERSE 23. YOU GOT TO you gotta LEARN HOW TO ACT ON THE WORD OF GOD. FAITH WITHOUT WORKS IS DEAD. BUT MAN, IT CHANGED MY LIFE WHEN I UNDERSTOOD THAT MY ACTION AND MY CONFESSION IS NOT SOMETHING I DO TO GET GOD TO HEAL ME. I'M NOT DOING THINGS TO GET GOD TO MOVE. GOD HAS ALREADY MOVED, AND IN MY SPIRIT, IT'S COMPLETE. I'VE ALREADY GOT EVERYTHING. I DON'T NEED GOD TO COME AND HEAL ME. I NEED TO LEARN HOW TO RELEASE THE HEALING POWER OF GOD THAT ALREADY INDWELLS ME. I CAN'T TELL YOU THE DIFFERENCE THAT THAT MADE IN MY LIFE. IT'S HUGE. IT'S SO MUCH EASIER TO RELEASE SOMETHING THAT YOU BELIEVE YOU'VE GOT THAN IT IS TO GO AND GET SOMETHING THAT YOU DON'T HAVE. YOU KNOW, IF, if SAY, FOR INSTANCE, 10 FEET FROM ME OVER THERE IS HEALING, AND I SAY, I'M GOING TO BE HEALED, WELL, THEN THAT HAS AN ELEMENT OF DOUBT IN IT. BECAUSE SOMETHING COULD HAPPEN. SOMEBODY COULD TACKLE ME. SOMEBODY COULD COME AND STRAP ME TO A CHAIR, AND EVEN THOUGH HEALING WAS JUST 10 FEET AWAY, I MIGHT NOT EVER MAKE IT. BUT IF I SAY, THIS IS HEALING, I'M ALREADY HERE, HOW CAN I NOT GET WHAT I'VE ALREADY GOT? I KNOW SOME OF YOU ARE CONFUSED, SAYING, I, I'M NOT FOLLOWING WHAT YOU'RE SAYING. I'M SAYING THAT MOST CHRISTIANS ARE SAYING GOD CAN HEAL, AND IT WILL HAPPEN IN THE FUTURE, BUT THEY DON'T UNDERSTAND THAT IT'S ALREADY HAPPENED. AND WHY IS THAT? BECAUSE THEY DON'T FEEL IT. THEY GOT A DOCTOR'S REPORT THAT SAYS THAT THIS IS WHAT THEY'VE GOT. BUT SEE, YOU'RE JUST LOOKING FOR HEALING. YOU'RE LOOKING FOR THE POWER OF GOD ONLY IN SOME PHYSICAL, NATURAL WAY. IT'S IN YOUR SPIRIT THAT YOU WERE CHANGED. IN YOUR SPIRIT, YOU'VE ALREADY GOT THIS. AND SOMEBODY MIGHT SAY, WELL, WHAT'S THE DIFFERENCE, WHETHER IT'S ALREADY HERE IN MY SPIRIT? IT'S NOT IN MY BODY. AND UNTIL IT GETS IN MY BODY, I'M GOING TO DIE UNLESS SOMETHING HAPPENS. I TELL YOU WHAT, IT MAKES ALL OF THE DIFFERENCE IN THE WORLD TO KNOW THAT YOU'VE ALREADY GOT WHAT IT IS THAT YOU NEED. YOU KNOW, JUST LOOK AT IT THIS WAY. IF I TOLD YOU THAT YOU HAD A MILLION DOLLARS IN GOLD BURIED IN YOUR BACKYARD, AND YOU DIDN'T, YOU'VE NEVER SEEN IT, you, NOBODY EVER TOLD YOU THAT, BUT IF YOU BELIEVED WHAT I SAID, IT WOULD MAKE A DIFFERENCE. I GUARANTEE YOU, YOU WOULD GO OUT AND START DIGGING. IF YOU KNEW BEYOND ANY SHADOW OF A DOUBT IT WAS THERE, YOU DIDN'T KNOW HOW DEEP IT IS, YOU DIDN'T KNOW WHAT PART OF THE YARD, BUT YOU, IF YOU DIDN'T HAVE ANYTHING BUT A TEASPOON, I GUARANTEE YOU, YOU'D START DIGGING. YOU WOULD EVENTUALLY COME ACROSS THAT. AND IF you, ALL YOU HAD WAS A TEASPOON, AND IF IT WAS BURIED DEEP, IT MIGHT TAKE YOU A WHILE TO GET IT OUT. 
But if you believed it was there, you'd keep digging. But if you just were hoping that it was there, you might give a little effort to it, but the first time you get a blister, the first time that it becomes a little bit hard, you'd just walk away and say, I'm not sure that it's there. And you might give up, and you might leave a million dollars in gold buried in your backyard. See, when you understand that, no, I've got it. I know I've got it. I'm not waiting on God to heal me, to bless me. I'm already blessed with all spiritual blessings. By His stripes I was healed, 1 Peter 2, 24. When you understand that you've already got it, and you can look at your physical body, and even though it doesn't reflect it, you say, well, I know that there's a spirit part of me that can't be seen or felt, and it's in the spirit, and I am going to access that spirit through faith, and I'm going to believe God. When you get established in this, it makes all the difference in the world. It is so much easier to rest in something that you have than to go and try and get something that you don't have. Man, that's a powerful statement. You know, I'm dealing with a lot of things here. I've got all of this product that I'm going to be offering you, but I've got an entire teaching entitled, You've Already Got It, that is based on this exact same thing. It came from understanding who I am in Christ, that it's in the spirit realm, that I am complete and that I have everything, and I've learned how to rest in Him. Man, I've got teaching on resting in the Lord out of Hebrews chapter 4 that's based on this. Just about everything that the Lord has shown me has come from this revelation of understanding who I am in Christ and that in the Spirit, I am a completely brand new person. But I can't see it. I can't feel it. I have to just look in this spiritual mirror and whatever it says about me, that's who I am. It says, I'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I don't feel goosebump going up and down my spine. I don't always feel something, but this is what it says and I've learned how to just act on this. This is my window into the spirit realm. And it's how I perceive what is true about me in the spirit. And remember, a verse that I've already used a couple of times this week, John chapter 4, verse 24, says, God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You have to relate to God spirit to spirit. God doesn't just come through the physical realm and touch you through your body and then through your mind. No, He comes from the inside out. When you get born again, you're a brand new person on the inside, and the rest of the Christian life is finding out what you have, what power and authority, what rights and privileges that you have, and then you get your soul in agreement, and if you do that, that's two against one, spirit and soul against body, and your physical body will just follow in line and follow suit. I'm out of time, but I will continue this. I've got a lot more to share. I encourage you to please get this teaching entitled Spirit, Soul, and Body. I have it in English. I have it in Spanish. We have CDs, DVDs. we got study guides. We've got a little cartoon illustrated teaching of Spirit, Soul, and Body that this is really powerful. And my wife had actually read this book. It's an audio book, and you can get that. Our announcer will give you all of the information so please listen and then call or write today.